Redken master artist Ruth Roach and I want to share with you how to create this textured bob that has a lived-in feel. So I've started by sectioning the head into three main areas. A horseshoe section on the top at the parietal ridge or the widest point of the head, a section at the occipital and what that gives us is the top, midsection and the nape. I'm going to use One United as a cutting lotion as I go. I'm going to start in the center and the section is a panel that is no wider than my second knuckle. So I've got a little bit of graduation. I have two fingers uh, against the head here and that gives me a nice flat panel. What I'm going to do is come in flat on the panel and gradually start turning the blade towards the head and I'll start to take away the surface of the hair and just lightly with long strokes work my way out towards the edges and you can see how I have not moved with my holding hand my fingers stayed in position and we just took the hair away a little bit at a time. Now I'm going to go to my side section. I'm going to slightly over direct the hair back. I'm going to angle my blade slightly diagonal and continue with the same technique. By holding the blade diagonally this way, we're going to preserve length behind the ear. This is a great technique for getting weight and length off quickly. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So by over directing this slightly back, we do get more length here. What I'm going to do is rather than stand back here to cut the perimeter, I'm going to work my way around the side. So we take a little bit of that corner off. So what happens is we start to create a line that's slightly coming up towards the front as opposed to straight or straight down. So setting in the graduation first using the surface cutting and then cutting your perimeter gives you a softer line and still make it strong but it's going to be soft. So next what I've done is I've taken a horizontal section that gives us some density on the side here. I'm going to now connect my section to the existing perimeter that's happening underneath. So it just slid past my hands. I'm going to go in with the toe of the blade and work my way over. So that length will just sit to match our perimeter. Because we're using a razor, we're going to get some graduation in the hair. So as we get towards the area behind the ear that has less density, which is right about now, I'm going to go ahead and start working with less tension, which with a razor can be a challenge because you've got to hold on to the hair. So what we're going to do is comb the hair down. My fingers are in position. I'm going to let go of the hair and then close my fingers on the guide. And that's going to give me, allow for the, the natural movement in the hair. Around the ear here, I'm just going to comb it down. My fingers are in position. And then I'm going to close and follow the guide. Fingers in position, comb leaves the hair, close and follow the guide. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Drop down a horizontal section and connect the perimeter. So in the back here, where I do have tension, sliding past my perimeter, I'm going to go in and because I'm using tension, I am going to get some graduation of this hair. So it's going to stack up at the hairline a little bit. In this next section, what we want to do is remove weight. Because if we cut all this one length or just graduate it at the bottom, we get a lot of width through the hair. So by going through and doing what I'm going to do now, we're going to collapse the shape. I'm starting with a vertical section and you can see here where I've got my, that one inch section that we just dropped down. 
that's there. I'm going to slide right past it and let it drop out of my fingers. I'm going to go in and I'm going to weave through with the razor and I'm going to take some of that weight out. I'll take a little bit more. So the blade is behind the hair, behind the section, and I'm leaving the top of the section and the bottom of the section alone and razoring that out. So the short length that we go inside, the shortest that you want to go is where the hair bends when you push it back in towards the head. Any shorter than that and it will tend to stick out. So while my hand is still in position, I'm going to comb it again, pick up my section from the underneath that we just cut. There it is and I'm going to work my way up from there with long strokes of the razor. So what we just did was we cut a vertical line inside and outside and vertical lines remove weight and collapse the shape. So now what I'm going to do is continue on and I'm going to leave this section behind. The reason we leave this section behind is we don't want to continue to take and weave hair out of that section. We just want to do the new hair. So our guide is the bend in the hair. There it is, no shorter than that. Holding hand stays put. We're going to comb the section again. There's our guide from that bottom perimeter section, letting it drop out and working up from there with long strokes. So we're creating the shape and the texture at the same time. In the very front section, we're not going to weave through because we want to maintain weight there. And on most people, they don't have that much density. She does, but on most people, they don't. So you're not going to need to take any weight out of there. Long strokes, lots of soft texture. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So here's a tip when you're weaving through the hair with the, the razor to take out weight is when you go in, you can take little tiny pieces like that. You can take big pieces like this. You can do somewhere in between, a big one, then a couple little ones, and then a big one. So the amount of hair you want to take out is going to be determined by how big of a stitch you take, just like with highlighting. The reason we left that bottom section and brought down the perimeter first is we've got an insurance policy that our density is going to be even and we're not going to mess up our line on the bottom. So there's the completed midsection. You can see the weight is flat, we've taken the weight away, and then this is going to fall over. This is like the Spanx of the haircut, this is like the outfit. So this top, whatever we do, is going to take on the shape of the underneath. So I'm at the back of the horseshoe and I've taken a horizontal section across the back. We're going to drop this over what we just did all the way to the perimeter. So we're dropping it over all these short bits, all the layering, all that stuff all the way down to that furthest perimeter one more time. So there it is. I'm going to point cut so that the shortest point of my cut is going to hit the guide. So that means some of it is longer than the guide. Going in, close the shears on the points going on to the guide. So that way we're building up a little more weight and you can see here where that, that stays as opposed to the graduation continuing to move up the head. Now this section that we just cut at the perimeter is going to become our guide for the top. So we're not connecting to any of this underneath, just to this guide. So I'm going to be working with horizontal sections across the top of the head. You can see how wide this section is and how I end up having to over direct it or pinch it together to get an even amount of tension. So I'm only going to take half of that. Comb it straight back towards the guide. There's the guide. You can see it through the section. I'm just going to put a little stamp in there with the teeth. I'm going to go in a few inches from that line and then close the blades on the line. Picking up a piece, working my way up, and then close on the line. Doing that all the way through here and close on the line. 
And what that does is, this is a great technique for any layering that you're doing. Because what it does is it creates texture, you're texturizing, and you're cutting the outside length at the same time. Now I'm gonna pick up the other half of the section and then go in and close on the guide, same thing. Now where you go in with the blades is gonna depend on how much texture you wanna take out. If the hair is finer, you might stay closer to your cutting line. If the hair is more dense, closer to the head. However, never go past that bend line because then you'll end up with hair that's standing out. So if you look at my fingers here, and I go in to do this technique, I'm gonna run into my fingers because you've gotta go past the guide to be able to close it. So what we wanna do is get these fingers out of the way. So that way they're out of the way, we're good to go, we can go in, blades go past my fingers and close. So I'm not gonna cut myself because there's nothing there. Going up and then close. Just like a razor, we have to slide our, our holding hand past the guide, otherwise we can't see the guide. So now you can see how the layers connect in the very center of the nape, but then they get longer as we come towards the front. Now when we go and connect our perimeter in from the front, it's gonna almost look like it's a one length bob. What I've done now is sectioned out the fringe area and I've gone back to my razor. We took the point off already, but what I wanna do is start to add some visual texture and some layers around the face. And I'm gonna do that with the tip of the razor. So this hair is just gonna start to lift and open up a little bit more around her face. So we just get a little lightness, but we keep our corner on our bob. Now I'm gonna use two products. First, Diamond Oil Glow Dry, a couple drops in my hand. And then I'm gonna use Guts 10, spray it right into my hand. And that way we get a combination of the two. Nice pliability and shine mixed with the hold of the guts. I'm just gonna work that through. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a diffuser. Now I'm gonna start lifting the hair up more and using the teeth and the diffuser to go and start to push a little more wave into the hair. So here's the finished look. You can see how we've got longer layers that are falling in that horseshoe section over what we did underneath. We got lots of texture, the shape is made a little bit skinnier, and it still has a lot of movement. I'm Redkin Master Artist Ruth Roach. Thank you for watching.